So we'll go ahead and get started. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the launch of the real world electric bus operation, trend in technology, performance degradation and lifespan of batteries. This working paper has uh, been supported by Transformative Urban Mobility Initiative to me, which is a leading global implementation initiative on sustainable mobility. Uh, I would now request Mr. Pawan Malukutla, Executive Director, Electric Mobility, Clean Air and Hydrogen, WRI India, to please launch the paper and set the context of this webinar. Over to you, Pawan. Yeah, thank you, Anandita. Um, I think it's a great moment to really understand about um, battery degradation and how does it really impact um, the whole thinking around um, the lifespan of batteries and performance of batteries itself. And this is a working paper, a um, lot of effort taken by Dr. Praveen and his team. And um, it's good to really understand how this really will impact the real uh, operations, right? Uh, let me launch my, um, do I need to click on the scan? Anandita or so yes we have the paper launched um, uh, this paper uh, link will be shared in the chat right now here which will really um, take you to the link for you to download and please share your comments and feedback with us so I think um, in this paper we look at um, what's happening with the performance of electric um, batteries of electric buses specifically all the combinations the lfp the nmc and the lto the three dominant chemistries that are prevalent and we also try to understand how this will really impact the performance of bus operations because the battery um when it comes down to 80 percent of its state of health um it really leads to uh, what we know as no more usable for automotive use right it really and it's important to understand uh, is it taking four years five years six years seven years to um go to that stage because it directly has impact on the charging uh do we need to do one charging episode do we need to increase the charging episode and once we actually start looking at that in impacts the operations of buses. As we all know that urban buses typically operate in major cities, um, in tier one cities anywhere between 180 to 220 to 30 kilometers on a daily basis. And in smaller cities, we see anywhere between 150 to 180 kilometers. And this um, is directly with introduction of electric buses in India. Um, the battery becomes a key component on how it has to be charged and how its performance, whether it is um, cyclic aging, um, is the aging happening due to the effect of temperature, the humidity, how is the uh, whole play of uh, current and voltage leading to its own uh, degradation, its natural degradation or degradation because of charging. And that then helps us decide how the Planning of operations should be taken into consideration, specifically very important for public transport agencies in India, where operations is um, extremely, extremely critical, which ferry millions of people. So this paper is an attempt to really bring this issue um, of performance of battery, the degradation of battery, and also Subsequently, we will be doing a follow-up uh, paper on this, which will talk about the circularity um, from electric buses. India, as we know, is close to almost 6,000 electric buses that are operational. And there is also plan now for 50,000 buses. And recently also we heard in media that, you know, uh, there's plan to actually almost go up to 8 lakh buses being replaced as electric buses. As we move towards this big, um, mission of electrifying all the buses, it's extremely important for us to understand the real world of impact and operations of batteries. I think with that, um, we'll have also a short presentation um, and we'll also hear out um, in further details how um, what we did in this paper, what we have analyzed and we'll take you forward with our findings.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pawan. Uh, I would now like uh, Mr. Lalit Mudolkar, who is a junior associate, associate with our electric mobility team, to please uh, share a short uh, uh, presentation on uh, the findings, etc., cetera, on, of the paper. Um, also, if you have any questions which come to your mind while he is presenting, please uh, share it on the chat and we will take it up in the question and answer session. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Anandita. Uh, let me share my screen. Is my screen visible? Yes. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, in this presentation, I will give the crisp insight uh, from our paper, which is uh, which talk about the real world electric bus operations, specifically the trend in technology performance, uh, degradation, and lifespan of battery. Uh, as we know the importance of the electric buses in decarbonizing the public transport sector, but in adoption of the electric buses, there are various challenges associated with it, such as its upfront cost, degradation, high energy consumption, lack of charging infrastructure, bottleneck in supply chain, etc. The challenges such as degradation get affected due to the different stress factors due to which we can see the effects like capacity fade and power fade in the battery. While due to the uh, factors affecting energy efficiency, we see the uncertainty in the energy consumption pattern. Uh, togetherly, both resulted in the reduced performance in electric buses and due to the reduced performance, we see the impact on its operational side. To mitigate uh, its impact and overcome from all the challenges, uh, we have given some recommendation in the operational planning, technical and policy side in the paper. Uh, in the working paper, we have explained the uh, we have explored the uh, following questions, uh, which generally comes in mind while uh, adapting the electric buses, such as uh, which battery uh, technology are preferred for powering the electric buses in different geographical locations, how how different e buses uh, e bus batteries functions in the different environmental and operating condition, and what are their impacts on the energy consumption and battery life, what are the different roles. Uh, 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 what are the different degradation mechanisms in uh, overall battery degradation rate in e buses? Uh, what are the uh, what are the short term impact of the degradation on electric buses, and how uh, do they affect the business model uh, models uh, economic viability in the longer run? Uh, um, uh, for uh, for uh, for the working paper, we have adopted the steps like uh, we have reviewed the battery technology for the e-bus e application, uh, at the cell chemistry, cell design, and pack design, uh, and we have done the analysis on the battery degradation under the different uh, stress uh, uh, under the different stress factor, and uh, uh, we have built the cell level understanding, pack level understanding, and we have compared it with the real world case studies to get the uh, 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 get the uh, uh, clarity on it, and uh, uh, we have also uh, uh, we have also identified the impact of the battery degradation on e bus performance, battery lifespan, and economic viability. Also, uh, during the study, we have uh, faced the challenges like uh, lack of availability of uh, real world data, specifically ups, uh, 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 ups, uh, which is real. Uh, uh, due to the la uh, lack of uh, reported data for the battery degradation specifically in the india uh, the if, uh, the effects of the uh, actual usage uh, uses and e bus operation battery degradation can be dissimilar to what the study has noted and uh, this raised the importance of the uh, detailed analysis to assess the exact picture of the battery life and degradation in indian operating condition and to solve the uh, to solve the face the challenges Faced with the challenges uh, 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 related to the real world uh, data, we have adopted the unique approach in which uh, we have analyzed the uh, cell level experimental data for the popular battery technology on the degradation under various uh, environmental conditions and compared it with the uh, real, world, real world case studies to reduce the scenarios for the best performance under Indian climatic condition. Uh, while uh, deploying the electric uh, buses on a particular route, uh, we have to take the various decisions uh, related to uh, the e-bus specification at the planning stage itself. 
uh, that uh, such as uh, what should be its battery capacity, what charging strategy we are going to be use, what will be the energy consumption pattern that we are going to be observed in the given uh, a given route. All these specification are uh, interlinked with each other. Suppose if we choose the oversized battery, it will increase the curve weight, reduces the payload capacity and shift the energy consumption at the higher end. And if we choose the uh, undersized battery, then uh, we will face the issues like shortening of the range, increase the in which increases the importance of the opportunity charging. And due to the frequent opportunity charging, specifically in the DC fast charger, uh, uh, we get accelerated battery reduction, degradation. So to overcome from all this, uh, uh, all this, uh, we have to take the decision considering the balance between all these parameters. Uh, uh, in every electric vehicle, uh, uh, battery is a complex topic and let's try to uh, decode from the basic. Uh, Lithium-ion battery are broadly categorized based on uh, either, either uh, anode or cathode chemistry. Uh, based on the anode chemistry, uh, uh, based on the cathode chemistry, we have the variants like LFP, NMC, LMO and uh, NCA. And based on the uh, anode chemistry, uh, we have the chemistries like LTO. And during the charging, uh, charging, discharging, lithium ion, uh, uh, lithium ion travels between the cathode and anode via the uh, via, uh, liquid electrolyte, uh, and uh, uh, we can charge it via uh, the external circuit. And uh, uh, lithium, via, uh, uh, lithium variants give the best performance between the temperature range of the fifteen to thirty-five degrees Celsius, and using at the low or uh, a high temperature accelerate the battery degradation and can lead to a irre irreversible damage to the lithium ion battery. Uh, in the planning stage itself, uh, we have to uh, uh, we have to choose the suitable battery technology for the e buses. In lithium ion battery, uh, LFP, NMC, LTO variants are are emerging as the suitable uh, options for the electric buses. Uh, due to their uh, relatively better performance, uh, from which LFP and NMC are widely used. Uh, based on the cell chemistry, NMC NMC batteries have high energy density and they have uh, they are sensitive to high C rate. While LFP have high cycle life, high uh, DOD tolerance, and thermal stability, but they are low. Uh, they have low energy density than the uh, NMC. While well, LTO batteries have high stability to flash and fast charging, uh, but they have uh, they have low energy density than LFP and NMC. From this spider diagram, uh, we can uh, see how different uh, key performing indicators uh, get uh, def uh, deflected based on the cell chemistry. Uh, the battery cells are further distinguished into the pouch, prismatic, and cylindrical cells. Uh, the structure uh, and how different key performing indicators uh, uh, varies due to the uh, cell design we can see in this part diagram. In the prismatic cell, uh, they have high energy density at the present, better packaging efficiency due to their compact size and bear high. Uh, they can bear high mechanical stress from their cover. Uh, these features make them more suitable uh, cell for the, uh, for the electric buses. And considering the dominance Considering, uh, considering the dominance manufacturing, prismatic cells are uh, dominatingly manufactured in the China. While in uh, while the pouch cells, they do not have the uh, strong hard, hard case, but uh, their weight is 20% less, uh, less than the prismatic cells. And the capacity is also 50% higher than the prismatic cells. And these cells are uh, dominatingly manufactured in the uh, Europe and South Korea. Uh, while talking about the uh, cylindrical cells, they are easy to manufacture. Their design format, uh, their design transforming from lower volume to the higher volume battery cells increases the energy density by 30% in the, uh, at the cell level and 20% at the pack level. And these cylindrical cells are dominatingly manufactured in the USA and Japan. Uh, while moving from the cell to the pack, Generally, the uh, method adopted is uh, uh, method adopted widely is connecting the cell to get the module and then module to the pack. 
but during this process various additional component get add on such as the battery management system thermal management system packaging material etc which reduces the cell to pack level uh, energy density uh, along with that uh, the innovative back uh, innovative pack design are coming into the market such as uh, blade batteries by the byd uh, in which they are providing the unique cell to pack uh, approach uh, unique cell to pack approach uh, design which increases the space utilization by 50% resulting the uh, better cell to pack efficiency but during such innovations we should keep in mind that uh, we should not compromise with the safety related issue with it uh, along with the uh, additional component that uh, get add on during the manufacturing the inefficient battery packaging also lead to the uh, drop of the uh, energy density when we are moving from the cell to the pack uh, in this uh, in this graph, we can see that uh, how different chemistry uh, 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 energy density how how energy density get dropped in the different chemistry when we are moving from the cell to the pack. Uh, in case of uh, uh, in case uh, when we compare LFP and NMC, LFP battery packs allows better cell to pack level efficiency uh, in terms of energy density than the NMC. Uh, and talking about the uh, different chemistry is used in electric buses in the different countries uh, china is widely using uh, lfp in india we are using lfp and nmc in north america uh, lfp lto and nmc are used in europe uh, they are uh, using lfp and uh, in europe uh, uh, eraser is also using sodium nickel technology for their uh, electric uh, some of their uh, electric bus mo uh, models uh, uh, after choosing the su suitable battery technology, uh, we have to identify the optimal battery size and charging strategy for the given road. Uh, suppose if we choose oversized battery, then we can go ahead with the overnight slow charging. Uh, overnight slow charging at the depot. Uh, but uh, if we choose uh, undersized battery, then uh, with the overnight slow charging, uh, we have to be dependent upon the uh, uh, opportunity charging within the road. And due to the frequent fast opportunity charging, uh, the battery degradation get accelerated and uh, reduce total deliverable distance uh, before its end of life in automotive life is observed, which can be seen in this uh, uh, in this graph. So uh, the optimal battery sizing with the optimal charging strategy uh, and schedule uh, uh, optimal charging strategy and scheduling is important to get the better results. Uh, the battery life in e-buses e is majorly affected due to the degradation, uh, which is the sum of the calendar aging and cyclic aging. Cyclic aging is uh, uh, cyclic aging means uh, uh, degradation while charging and uh, discharging, and the uh, calendar aging means uh, degradation while battery at the rest condition. Uh, the degradation can happen at any stage of the electric buses, like uh, for example during. Uh, during the driving uh, pack, uh, in parking and standby condition and also while charging. There are various stress factors that affect the aging in the battery such as uh, high average SOC, high temperature contribute to the calendar aging while uh, high high low temperature, uh, high C rate, deep depth, uh, deep depth of recharge contribute to the uh, cyclic aging. Uh, due to the uh, due to the degradation, we see the effects like the capacity fade and the power fade. In capacity fade, it is the losing the amount of energy that energy storage device can hold, and due to which we see the effects like losing the driving range. And due to the power fade, uh, which is the decrease in the speed at which energy can be discharged. Uh, the effects like uh, decrease in performance, acceleration, and gradability, uh, and regeneration baking uh, is seen. Uh, the contribution of the calendar loss and cyclic loss uh, uh, in overall degradation can be seen in this graph, uh, which is of the uh, train in the degradation in LMA battery pack used in the e car in USA. Uh, from the data set, uh, we can see that a battery degrades faster at its initial stage and its degradation goes down with the time. Similarly, the contribution of the calendar aging is more at the initial stage and gradually goes down with the time. Share uh, and the share and the uh, share of the uh, calendar loss and cyclic uh, cyclic loss 
uh, affected due to the different stress factor also. For example, if we consider the temperature, uh, uh, if the battery is operated at the high temperature region, just like Hawaii, uh, we see the contribution of the calendar aging over the 10 years in LMA battery pack is 39%. And if the same battery pack is, is uh, it is used in the uh, low temperature region like Alaska, then the contribution of the calendar aging uh, over the 10 years in LMA battery pack will be the 80% only. Uh, the non-optimal con uh, condition of the temperature SOC, uh, uh, DOD, uh, uh, charge discharge rate as a stress factor for the lithium ion battery and they are uh, contribute to the battery degradation. The severity of the stress factor uh, contribute to the battery degradation rate. Uh, here we can, uh, uh, here we can, uh, we have the compared the impact of the battery degradation rate on the battery life. Uh, yeah, if the, uh, if the, if the battery life, uh, uh, if the battery degrades with the average rate of nine percent, uh, then we can see, uh, we can see uh, the automotive life of the battery will be uh, over. Uh, uh, it, it will be approximately uh, uh, 2.5 years and if we uh, if uh, if the degradation rate uh, is managed around the 3 percent then uh, then the battery life will be close around the 7.5 year uh, managing the uh, managing the key uh, key parameters for the optimal range is important to the gate uh, to get the optimal battery life uh, in the electric buses. So uh, we have to maintain the stress. Uh, we have to analyze the stress factor, and uh, based on that, uh, uh, we have to maintain it's in uh, uh, in the op optimal range. Uh, for example, uh, if we consider the temperature stress factor. Uh, uh, here, uh, here in this graph, we can see that uh, the drop of uh, number of cycles in the LFP pack from four thousand to the uh, four thousand to the two thousand uh, cycles. Uh, when we uh, when we increase the temperature from uh, twenty five to forty five degrees Celsius. Similarly, in case of NMC, uh, if the number of the uh, the number of the cycles before its uh, uh, end in the first life it decreases from 12,000 uh, 1200 cycle to uh, 500 cycle when we increase the temperature from 34 uh, 34 degrees Celsius to 46 degrees Celsius uh, and uh, also the temperature gives uh, uh, raise to the safety related issue uh, like thermal uh, thermal runaway which can uh, which make is important to maintain the temperature in the optimal range of the uh, 15 degrees celsius to 35 degrees celsius which can be uh, done by using the efficient thermal management system uh, the thermal management system that uh, uh, thermal thermal management system uh, have their own pros and cons some people will say it will increase the con uh, uh, it will increase the space consumption it will increase the weight reduces the battery pack energy density increase the battery uh, battery cost but on the other hand uh, we will get its benefit on the longer run such as it will uh, increase the battery life increase the safety uh, decreases the life cycle cost like that so considering all this we have to take the decision for it uh, uh, like temperature, uh, managing SOC is uh, uh, man managing SOC in the optimal range is also important. Uh, yeah, important. Uh, some of the key observations from the global case studies are captured in this uh, working paper. For example, uh, NMC batteries are uh, more uh, sensitive to the C rate DOD than the LFP and LTO. Managing the op optimum temperature SOC level uh, uh, with uh, top up charging due to the uh, during the uh, during the operations will help in implement, uh, improving the battery life uh, than the uh, deep dip, uh, de depth of discharge uh, lto variants have a longer life than lfp and nmc uh, but lto also uh, and lto uh, variant also have a flash uh, uh, flash charging but they are uh, they have the uh, but we have to compromise with the energy density if we are considering the LTO. Uh, 
during the high bat, uh, high bat, uh, during uh, due to the uh, high battery degradation uh, we see its impact on the operational side so uh, that we have uh, broadly categorized into into the two parts uh, such as short term impact and the long term impact uh, uh, in the short term impact uh, we have see uh, we can see the uh, uh, reduction in the driving range uh, then a shifting of the energy consumption pattern at the higher end in the operational efficiency we see the increase in the charging requirement which eventually increases the vehicle downtime and uh, directly impact the e bus scheduling process and due to uh, due to the reduced performance uh, we see the effect uh, uh, we see the need for the high replacement ratio also uh, to get the same service from the electric buses and in long term impact uh, we see the need for the uh, frequent battery replacement which further increases the total cost of ownership uh, of the electric buses uh, to overcome from all the impact and uh, obtain the optimal battery life in electric buses uh, following recommendation uh, we have uh, we have given in the paper in the operational side uh, if the electric buses is going for the longer haul uh, we uh, we uh, we should try to keep the battery temperature close to the ambient temperature which is 15 to 35 degrees celsius with the low average soc uh, the uh, operating soc range of 20 to 80 with low average soc can be uh, can reduce the rate of cyclic aging and that should be uh, preferred the aggressive driving high payload capacity uh, frequent uh, dc fast charging uh, accelerate the battery degradation and that should be avoided uh, in the planning side we recommend uh, uh, the uh, incorporation of the bat uh, incorporation of the battery wear cost and opportunity charging cost while uh, estimating the total cost of ownership the steps like uh, driver training will help in uh, building the uh, driver's knowledge about the electric bus and their component that will eventually help in achieving the optimal driving behavior in the uh, during the operations in the technical side uh, we recommend to adopt the efficient battery management system thermal management system and also we recommend to adopt the innovative ideas like intelligent energy management system which which will help in monitoring the auxiliary and traction uh, traction power requirement uh, on the policy side, we recommend to adoption of the robust battery data collection and management uh, system, which will help in developing the various battery uh, aging, uh, various battery uh, aging management strategy. Uh, also, the also the collected data will help in developing the uh, in uh, in the different fronts such as uh, efficient planning for the operation. Uh, technological development, special, uh, especially the battery life assessment and uh, estimating the residual value and uh, potential second life will help in uh, overcoming the challenges that can be faced in the circular economy. And uh, it will also help in achieving the better resource efficiency and reduced environmental impact in case of the battery. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lalit. Uh, I would uh, request Dr. Parveen Kumar, Senior Program Manager, Electric Mobility, uh, WRI India, to please uh, take up uh, the question and answer session. I think we all we do have three uh, questions in the Q&A. Uh, Parveen, if you want to start with uh, those. Thank you, Anandita. Uh, I'll request Lalit, can you just keep that uh, basic chemistry slide on the screen? So that I can just uh, explain the temperature thing. So one of the question is about the do extremely cold uh, and high temperature environment equally contribute to battery degradation or do they affect batteries differently in terms of their long term performance and lifespan. So for the lithium ion variants, as Lalit has explained, the temperature is one of the major challenge. And if you just see the working principle of the lithium ion battery where ions are moving uh, between cathode and anode during charge discharge, what happens when you are operating the uh, uh, lithium battery at a very low temperature? Let us suppose you are going below zero degrees centigrade. And as you go further at the low temperature, what happens that this uh, uh, movement of uh, ions becomes sluggish. And if you try to force through the fast charging, 
that can lead to the irreversible damage to the battery ca cathode or anode materials or the electrolytes and this can lead to the serious uh, damage to the battery similarly when you so and as he explained the broadly the uh, degradation occurs via two uh, me uh, mechanism one is the calendar aging another is the cyclic aging calendar aging means when you have stored the charge and the battery is degrading due to changes in the uh, cell uh, materials so what happens when you are operating at a very high temperature that time also this uh, movement of ions get affected the material will be affected and so multiple factors are involved and in contributing into the uh, degradation so uh, that's why we what we did in this working paper try to just uh, and also we don't have a, enough data to conclude at the pack level so we just try to build from the bottom uh, up approach where we uh, cell level understanding we use and then try to explain and uh, finally we have recommended that what kind of uh, condition will be optimum for the e-bus or battery used in the EV application in different environmental conditions. Then other question is there about uh, uh, any sensitivity analysis undertaken for the different factors. So as I mentioned that very limited data is available. Most of the research is available at the cell level. And when you go at the pack level and using the battery in the EV, that additional complexity comes into the picture. So getting the data at that level, is you need a, um, enough data to conclude and uh, identify the contribution of each stress factor in the battery degradation. So we have tried to build based on the uh, data available and we have suggested that what need to be done if we want more insight to get the best scenario uh, for the uh, batteries uh, used in the EV application. Like most of the, one of the challenge what currently we have seen that people are talking about ki, there is a uncertainty in the energy consumption. So the bus energy consumption in winter is different than the summer. So basically energy used in the e-bus is mainly for two purpose. One for traction and then other for the auxiliary requirement. Auxiliary requirement depends on the multiple factor that how you are, uh, the, if the temperature, if the winter is there, then whether you are using the, using the heating for heating instrument or in the uh, summer time you are using the AC, how frequently you are opening the door and closing the door of the bus. So that's why we have mentioned, we have given some recommendation that uh, uh, also the driving behavior plays a very important role. Okay. That's why we have mentioned ki the some of the technical thing can be used to efficiently utilize the energy from the battery for the e-bus application. Then analytical instrument is suitable. Uh, another question is about the uh, analytical instrument is suitable to test battery degradation profile. So, uh, doing the analysis for battery degradation itself is a very complex thing. So different method and approach are, uh, approaches are available. People are talking about uh, um, uh, the physics-based model people are using to understand the degradation. Then the uh, pure mathematical models are there, semi-empirical semi models are there. Each one is contributing and uh, there is a, um, uh, we have to take a uh, decision on the trade-off between complexity and the accuracy we want from the analysis. But it's still a lot need to be done, even the uh, estimation of a state of health from the battery. So they are also, that depends how efficient is your algorithm to assess the state of health. So all these things is, is still under the research. We have reasonable understanding, but a lot need to be done. So next question is about Nissan for their product leaf ad conductor study mentioning that the speed of charger does not affect life of battery. So uh, if you just see from the chemistry side, see uh, what you can do, ki, uh, BMS is the electronic component sitting on the battery. There you can set an uh, algorithm that this much be the C rate that will be allowed for the charge discharge. So how you can develop a robust BMS that will not pass because the chemistry side, if you go, you, everything is there in front of you that if you, there is a limitation of the cathode material and the anode material. If you do very fast insertion and extraction of the lithium ion in the cathode and anode material. Cathode material may undergo irreversible structural change. So the active lithium available for the transportation will come down. 
सो इफ समबडी इज क्लेमिंग की वी आर माय बैटरी विल बी नॉट अफेक्टेड दिट मींस देयर इज अ सम सम एफिशिएंट एल्गोरिथम और सम स्पेशल थिंग यूज्ड इन द बीएमएस और एडिशनल थिंग व्हिच स्टॉप और इट विल नॉट अलाउ द वेरी फास्ट चार्जिंग फॉर द बैटरी सो व्हाटएवर यू डू इट विल लिमिट टू दैट रेंज एज पर माय अंडरस्टैंडिंग सो from chemistry side i can say ki there is a limitation with the each chemistry like lto battery you can charge it very high flash charging you can go but as uh, lalit mentioned ki there is a trade off if you are going for a flash charging then the energy, uh, your uh, energy density of lto batteries are less cost is high but life life span is high like uh, you can use for uh, you can get the 10 more than 10000 cycles from the lto battery so you have to take a uh, trade off between performance requirement cost and the safety all these aspect and based on that the usually people take a decision that which battery chemistry they should go then next is usually has to replace a bus e bus battery when the usable capacity goes below 80% can these battery be reused for low utilization buses like school so when the battery loses the 20% of its initial capacity is not advisable to use in the uh, automotive application because any time that battery can um, surrender that uh, surrender for the application and safety issues will be there so what happens that if the temperature is managed well during the automotive life these batteries can be repurposed for the second life application but there also we need a data at the cell level because in one pack so many cells will be there and each one will be having on a different stage so we need a data at the cell level to assess whether these cells are suitable to repurpose for the second life application stationary application or maybe the low power vehicle these batteries pack can be remanufactured but uh, it depends though on the health of the cells after the 20% loss of that uh, initial capacity for better real world understanding ebus battery is in a key recommendation should be the ebus operator oem should mandate the share data on battery performance yes so sharing the data is very important and uh, uh, and this is uh, beneficial for all stakeholders so uh, currently it's a uh, lot of hesitation is there among the stakeholder while sharing the data but uh, Uh, if the data is uh, required data is available with the um, authorities or research institutions about how the battery is performing at the different route and different uh, geographical location that will uh, understanding will ultimately help all the stakeholders oems will also get benefited with that that what need to be done to get the best performance so yes this is a very good suggestion and we have even given the template in the um uh, an extra that uh, battery data must be collected because one of the challenge was there the lack of the data and we uh, scanned the literature across the globe and based on that we try to build the scenario but uh, we need a local specific data then only the best scenarios for that particular region or countries can be provided any study on these routes uh, over the uh, increasing deployment of electric bus in india what trend do you observe in terms of replacement of batteries so currently uh, we have seen that in last one or two year lot of uh, e bus deployment is happening so um, it's still when the data is available in the public domain that what kind of challenges e bus operators are facing in terms of uh, life and how the battery is degrading so data sharing is very critical if we want to comment on this but of course uh, the we have the tropical and subtropical environment in india so degradation rate degradation rate will be relatively high and uh, the availability of data will uh, help us in getting more insight that what is happening on the ground and then uh, some instances of buses catching fire have been reported are the battery systems and the hot climate in india potential factor contribute so as i mentioned ki the battery is a is a complex system but if you manage effectively that will be really uh, give you the best performance if you compare with the ice buses with the e buses in ice buses we are losing uh, uh, more, almost more than 80% of energy uh, and utilizing only 20% so efficiency wise electric buses are much more better than the ice buses like almost 75 to 80% of 
energy from the battery can be utilized for the application. So here only thing is that that you have to, one need to understand the uh, pros and cons and strength of the strength and weakness of the battery and then take a best de optimum decision to get best life out of that. If we abuse the battery and if we don't uh, take care of the stress factor, of course, that will lead to the safety hazard. That's why the training and understanding of basics is very critical and we have tried to give the relevant uh, detail in a, uh, because this is a complex thing, but we have tried to give the information is as simple as possible without comp and same time we tried not to make this over simple so that the uh, critical details get lost. So we have tried to maintain a balance between that in this one. How many data points were captured and from which cities for this analysis were the operating condition of passenger loading stops and was so we have included the data uh, information in this because uh, uh, as um, Pawan mentioned in the opening remark that we have done the detailed analysis but lot need to be done this is the first working paper and more data and we uh, as one of the question was there about the data so more data availability of more data will help us in giving the more precise information and the more precise suggestions what need to be done. So we have provided the detail in the working paper. Follow both slow and fast char charger eventually result in a very similar battery health at the end of the useful life or bus DC fast charging would be major factor in terms of average utilization of the bus. How can HT efficiently fuel charge? So the uh, each chemistry respond in a very different way with the fast charging. For example, if NMC chemistry is there, it's having uh, each chemistry is having its own pros and cons. Uh, for example, if you are going for a very fast charging and uh, uh, and you want to go for the opportunity charging, so what it appears LFP chemistry is relatively better. And uh, uh, and if you want, if you have a longer route and uh, if you can manage the C rate and uh, with the charge discharge rate in the optimal range, like for NMC. It's, always uh, always uh, suggested that it should be less than 1c charge uh, charge uh, 1c you should be charging and uh, you should not be uh, doing the depth, deep deep discharge of the battery otherwise the degradation will be on the higher side so if you are selecting any chemistry you have to select the optimum condition for that chemistry so you can't uh, use the nmc and then uh, use the condition which is more suitable for the lfp chemistry or the L lto chemistry so each one comes with its own uh, pros and cons and we have to take the decision based on the KPIs. Please share the lifespan of the commercial transport sector like buses. Is there any guideline for battery disposal? Think it will be a big challenge. So on this uh, government has uh, notified the battery waste management rule and then it's more uh, things are evolving but lot need to be done on this front. As we have also suggested that uh, if the circularity is uh, uh, incorporated in the business model that will help in adding the additional revenue stream in the business model and same time this will begin bring the effic resource efficiency and a lot of uh, concern that is there with the battery disposal can be addressed. What global trend do you observe in the field of battery chemistry and how do you foresee this trend evolving in India over the next? So this we have uh, mentioned in the uh, working paper that what kind of battery chemistries are preferred in the, uh, different geographical location. In India, we have seen the LFP, NMC and LMO chemistries are used, but LFP and NMC are the dominant chemistry used in the e-bus application. Then what is the typical charge discharge rate currently being used for the e-bus application? So currently, if you are using the e-bus uh, NMC chemistry, then uh, charge discharge rate should be less than 1c and uh, because high charge discharge rate is uh, will accelerate the uh, degradation especially uh, at the low temperature for lfp you can go for the high c rate because it's uh, relatively stable than the nmc against the high c rate if you are if you want a really fast charging then one should go for the lto chemistry but there the limitation is there the energy low energy density and the weight of the battery so, but you get a high cycle life, more than 10,000 cycles you will get. Praveen, yeah. Pavan here. Uh, in the LFPs, I've been seeing, you know, when I was doing, looking at a lot of the uh, C ratings, so I didn't see anything beyond 0 0.3, 0 0.4 um, for e-buses, right? A lot of the C ratings. 
Is yes. that the norm? Uh, no, uh, most of the e-bus operator, they keep below around 0.5 C and less than that they manage and go. So see, most of the e-buses in India, they opt for the um, uh, overnight charging and they size the battery, full battery size for the whole route. Like if they are going for 200 kilometers, they will size for that. But problem was... That's the point that... I wanted to wanted to bring that um, city after city when we have been designing the bus system, we exactly this is what is happening, right? That they don't want to actually get into fast charging episodes or uh, opportunity charging during daytime. Their preference is let's select battery sizes that can cater to almost uh, 15 16 hours of operation. But Pawan, what we have observed in this one in the work that we discussed earlier also that. Uh, uh, optimum sizing is very important and opportunity charging is not bad, but uh, very fast charging and frequent fast charging is not good. But uh, the decision can be if you are having the very big battery pack and doing overnight charging, then calendar aging will come into the picture and then you will be end up, you will be ending up doing deep depth, uh, going for a deep discharge of the battery. So you will be having the habit of uh, charging the battery once is completing the com whole uh, like uh, whole uh, whole day duty after completing that that will be the thing i was also reading some research paper on this whole ultra supercharging um i think our charging it super fast charging itself is a issue for degradation but many of them brush aside uh, not recognizing that specifically in bus operations and i hope uh, our paper really uh, sheds some light but yeah back to you thanks yeah, so for flash charging like LTO with the LFT, if they are using, so if you are going for flash charging, then you have to opt for that particular chemistry, then the cost and other associated thing will come. So decision depends like all, so why we have captured all these things that you need to identify the best scenario for a given uh, um, requirement and then go for that if you want the optimum performance. Then what would be the how is the health of battery likely to uh, What would be the synergy and trade of multiple chemistry during the multiple battery chemistry during the second life? Second life is not clear right now. But in some of the countries, like uh, they have to see that if you don't have a viable business uh, model for the second life, we have to see because not much examples are there and the cost of the cells are coming down so we have to see how it evolves the second life and it can be repurposed for the uh, for example if you are getting if you are using this battery where the liquid cooling was used for the uh, temperature thermal management during the automotive application so there will be a chances that battery cells will be having enough life for the second life and this can be repurposed for consumer application or for the stationary application, but we have to see how it evolves. So data will help in doing all this, like you have a multiple chemistry and all these things. So data is required to take the decision. Battery, uh, reducing battery chemistry cost, replacement cost might reduce, still battery sizing. How do you see the? So see whatever we do, like even the, what is happening, ki, in NMC variant, we have several options, like people are working towards development of uh, reducing the cobalt content in the battery so that uh, the cost as well as the other supply chain issues can be addressed. Then the other innovation is happening. So we'll see that how it uh, uh, evolved in the coming years. But for next, at least for the uh, seven to eight year, these LFP, LTO, uh, NMC and LMO batteries will be uh, playing important role in the all this uh, in this EV application yeah so I think we have answered it so as uh, uh, Pawan mentioned and uh, Anujita also the, if you have any questions suggestion for this working paper please mail to us and uh, we'll be happy to provide you the detail and any suggestion that we can take care in the upcoming research work, what we are doing. Thank you.
over to you anandita uh, thank you thank you parveen uh, uh, please uh, scan this uh, code and you will be able to download the paper and uh, we will uh, share the link also in the chat uh, just just give me a minute so uh, it's uh, it's been shared in the chat the the link uh, from where to download uh, the paper if there are uh, no more questions then uh, we will uh, close the webinar thank you everyone <laughs>